This is the uh, 2013 reunion interview uh, for historical stories about Vietnam tankers. Today we're going to talk about Operation Buffalo with Hank Bright, Brightwell, Terry Hunter, and Greg Martin, all three of, we, of whom served on that operation and have a story to tell. Gentlemen, what happened at Buffalo? Terry. <laughs> Terry. I, you know, I don't, I don't recall what time it was during the, in the morning, but uh, we, were, we were at the station, or whatever, we were at Contien, our platoon of tanks, and we had uh, four tanks. Normally you have five, but we had four tanks. The other one was out of commission or whatever. And uh, we got the word that uh, there was an ambush going on for uh, Bravo 1-9. Uh, from Contien, and uh, they needed help. Do you remember the date? July 2nd, 1967. Thank you. Uh, they needed help, so uh, uh, we mounted up the four tanks. We had a, probably like a, a small or platoon of grunts with us. Uh, I think there was a Captain Radcliffe okay. that was uh, part of that group. And my understanding is uh, once we got down to where uh, the problem was going on, it was up in the Trace, or the DMZ, uh, a couple miles uh, uh, west, or would that be east, towards the ocean, east, right? Uh, yeah. Towards east, Geo east. Lynn. Yeah. Uh, we headed in, and we put the tanks on line, and at that time, I believe, uh, I've been told that uh, Charlie Company 1-9, uh, they uh, came in off of float. Isn't that what that guy said? Uh, uh, helicopter. Kill, helicopter. And uh, they also uh, went in with us. We went in on a rescue mission, uh, our four tanks. And I know uh, two of our tanks uh, went in the deepest. That was a Gunny's tank, and that was our tank, I believe, that went in on the, the deepest. Uh, well, we, at the time, we were going in, and uh, we had to, a uh, number of times there was uh, action going on. Uh, the coex Martin was cutting down some gooks running around. I remember seeing. Do you remember watching all the vision, all the side? I was the driver, of course, and watching all the vision block or whatever a string of gooks running along. And I uh, remember uh, our tank mowing them down with the 30 caliber. And Greg was firing the 30 yep. caliber. Yes. Could Greg you see was, him from from your position? Uh, at first, no, because it was too much smoke. I mean, yeah. the tank commander said, uh, <clears throat> told me to open up with a 30, and I says, I can't see anything. He said, doesn't matter, open up, yeah. you know. Oh, so, <clears throat> and so I didn't see how many went down or yeah. whatever, but uh, it was well, just. Well, it was like shooting ducks at, the, at one time, because they were running, I guess, saw these uh, enemy running, and uh, all of a sudden uh, they weren't there anymore. They, were was, you exposed to, as the driver? I was, I was yeah, I could either look out the vision block or put my head out and okay. see what was going on. Yeah. Go ahead. The one thing I remember that I thought was funny when they were running across, there was one behind a tree, and he kept on peeking out from behind a tree, and he did it about three or four times. And I don't know if it, I can't remember if it was thirty or holding with the fifty, but shot him, and you saw, I could see it happen. Blew his whole arm off, and he went behind a tree. About three seconds later. He came back out again without the arm. Oh, went back, came out again, and then finally dropped. So I don't know if it was a decoy or whatever, yeah. but it was during that event yeah. that happened. I don't yeah. know if you, anybody ever saw that. I, I yeah. didn't. Were you the loader? Yeah. Okay. So you're exposed also. You're an hour when you're looking through the. Unfortunately, be, no, I don't have any vision blocks. Okay. But no. seeing as tall as I am, even when I stand up, it's this much sticks out. Uh, so I was out, the holster was out, then I was out. Did you fire the 90 at all during this initial contact? I don't, I don't believe we I were. I don't remember. We, we, we were, uh, I do, I, let's say, I do recall that, that same incident when we were firing at the gooks that were running. There was a couple of sergeants in front of me, and I remember they were like talking to each other, and all of a sudden you could see these green tracer rounds coming in, and I, I kind of stood up out of the hatch, and I told them to, to get down, and they got down. And uh, I think it was about, at that particular time, 
we took an RPG in the gypsy rack. Well, we, we have been firing because we had the, the gypsy rack was full of uh, uh, brass. Uh, brass. Yes, yes. Okay. And I remember, that's funny, that's, well, I haven't even thought about that. Uh, I, I can remember, uh, I think we, we all got splattered with hot brass as when that uh, uh, RPG round hit the gypsy rack. And uh, during that period of time, we were, we were uh, I don't know if it was, we were picking up bodies, and uh, the idea was to, you know, do what we could. Mm -hmm. And uh, I talked to another uh, fellow the other day that was along with, with another tank commander, Sergeant Sloan, and uh, I talked to him just recently, and uh, I, the reason for I, was, I wanted to put together a little article for Gunny Eckler, that was our Gunny. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was telling me, and this is where I got the information about that our tanks were in the furthest. I never really realized this myself until I talked to him. And he told us, he told me and that our tanks were in the, the furthest and that Gunny Eckler probably deserved a, a silver star that day because of the num number of enemy that he killed and the number of uh, Marines that he saved. Wow. And, and you referred to picking up bodies along the way. These were Marines who had been yes. part of the ambush or part yeah. of the firefight. Let me add something to what Terry said about being in the forest. From what I was told, <coughs> and if you I can remember, uh, the NVA had set up a more or less a horseshoe, horseshoe ambush, and Bravo 1-9 went in and they closed around them and they had them surrounded. And then when we came in, the reinforcements came in, us, a couple other grunt companies, unbeknownst to us, they had another horseshoe around the small one. And we, uh, us and Ecker, broke through the, the big one, broke through the small one, broke through the other side of the small one, oh broke through the other side of the big one before some FO called and said, you're going to, you're too far, turn around. And that's when we could see the yeah. river. That's when we saw the river. So you're looking at the Ben, ben High River. Yeah. That's what I was saying about Sergeant Sloan. It said that we'd gone in so far. Yeah. Yeah. I think you were in the yeah. DMZ? Yeah. Oh, we were in the DMZ. Yeah, the, gooks had, the, the yeah. gooks had uh, yeah. artillery. They, they were using artillery uh, that they probably had gridded. Where we were, yeah. yeah. Where we were. Because yeah. we yeah. could hear pinging off the tank. Yeah. Uh, I, that I, one thing I well, do remember. Well, that's after we hit the mine, wasn't it? We heard more yeah. after we yeah. hit the mine. Yeah. Oh. <clears throat> yeah, after we hit the mine, we were just stuck there. We couldn't move. Yeah. And, uh, and now, was that when you <clears> reached could, the river, you hit the mine? No. no it was it was just, coming we were coming back out. We were coming yeah. back. Yeah. And at that time, all three of us, at one time or another, or all at the same time, were outside the tank loading. Well, you got, so. you got tell them about we got hit with an RPG while we were sitting there. Well, first, we hit the mine, oh, yeah. and we were dead. Yeah. Right. And uh, you know, we we at the particular time, I think we had bodies on the tank. We couldn't traverse the turret, oh. and we had no radio contact. Oh wow! And and uh, at, you know, we were just sitting there. And uh, when I when we got hit with an RPG, Martin and I, we always have something we have in common because we both got wounded with the same RPG. He got it in the legs and I got it in the back. And that stuff uh, came right through the back of the uh, lower, the driver's seat, which is a metal back with a pad on it. Yeah. And that stuff, a lot of that stuff came right through the right through the seat and it blew me halfway out of the tank. And I remember I kept going and you know, I, got, I was out and I got underneath the tank and then everything quieted down and I got back in the tank. And we were just sitting there not know what the hell to do at the particular time. Right. And that's when the gunny showed up. Sometime later, the gunny showed up. And of course there was, by the way, there was another tank. When we hit that mine, about 30 yards away, there was another tank hit a mine at the same time. We both hit mines. We we're both sitting there. Somebody, another tank came in and drug, drug that tank up. And then we were sitting there. And time went on, time went on nothing happening and then pretty soon or shortly later I guess the gunny came in did the neutral steers around the tank you remember him doing that mm -hmm. checking for mines and uh, we got out do you want to tell the story from here all three of us were out uh, trying to hook this thing up and, and we wounded had, at the same time yeah 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 well, no, well, at, that he time, at that time the, only those two yeah. were wounded okay 
Yeah, and between the two tanks, there was only one tow cable. That's and because so, of the work with the engineers. We were busting tow hooks and cables. Oh, dragging. Be, before, yep. a couple of days before. And so well, we, we only had one cable left between us. Go ahead. So we got the cable, the only cable was on the gunny's tank. So we got the cable off the tank and then hooked it up to just one cable, one side. One, there are usually supposed to be two cables crossed, so it was just one cable straight straight ahead. And that was the opposite side of where we, where the track got blown off. Right. And, uh, so anyway, while, while we were out there, we loaded bodies onto the tank and... Yeah. and uh, you still then, taking small arms higher at, at this point? At that point, no. No. Okay. At that, I, you know, the, the, the amazing thing, I feel like I'm hogging this, the amazing thing was that I found that it seemed that Gooks used green tracer rounds and we used red tracer rounds. Mm -hmm. I, I swear to God, that's what it looked yeah, like. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, it was almost like, uh, you know, that's the rules. Yeah. So it, we didn't feel like we were, we were taking any rounds at that particular time. In fact, I made a comment earlier today about uh, Louis Ryle and uh, Kologi, a couple other guys from the other tank, had actually got out of their tank and had two pictures taken of them by the mine that they had hit at that on that particular situation, and we're sitting over here getting hit by an RPG. Wow! And they're, they and you can see the the pictures that I had. You can see the fright on their faces. That's what always amazes me. Yeah. I said, "Who the hell took these pictures?" So, Wait, what was the number of your tank? Bravo two three. Okay, and the Gunny's tank. Uh, two, two, that would have been two four, I believe. And the yep. Gunny, what was Gunny's name again? I'm sorry. Gunny Norman Eckler, <coughs> E C K L E R. So he he basically dragged it out of there after. Yes, he that. dragged us out. If I could tell you, uh, funny little thing, the thing about this after, uh, uh, and these guys didn't know this, because they were they were medevaced or they ended up uh, you ended up going to Japan after. After the second yeah. one. Because you had your two, your mm -hmm. second Purple Heart. I ended up going down to Cameron Bay and then I came back and uh, uh, Gunny Eckler's tank was actually uh, Gary Young's tank and the Gunny took over his tank at this situation and Gary was on the tank and Gary and I had been on the same tank together for about six months before they o awarded him a tank. And uh, Gary told me when I come back, he says, you know that day, he said, uh, uh, the gunny was actually told not to get you guys because they figured you were gone. Wow. And uh, they, they had lost too much that day. There's been a lot of action going on. Yeah. So hey, how, did you, how did you get wounded? Well, we were Well, being, that's, uh, I was just going to finish that thing about Gunny Eckler. Oh, the funny part was the, what Gary Young had told me. He said the, the gunny was told this and he could hear it over the comm helmet. And uh, the gunny said, well, you tell them to hang it in their poop snapper. I'm getting those guys. Wow. And he came in and, and did this. Then he hooked up and pulled us out, and you can start telling them about mm -hmm. it. Anyway, yeah, yeah, he hooked us up, and this is when I was remembering mortars pinging off the, Yeah. you know, yeah. we were inside, buttoned up before we got out while we were waiting for him to come, and we could hear mortars just pinging off the, the turret. Anyway, uh, he came. He traversed around to make sure there were no more mines. He backed up. Uh, we got out, and I don't know, it was all three of us getting out, scrambling assholes, elbows, yeah. trying to get us hooked up. We finally did. We all jumped back into the tank. He went head first into the drivers. Yeah. <laughs> I was the last one in. <laughs> I, I was the next one yeah. in. Uh, Greg was the last one in, and uh, he scrambled over into the gunner's, gunner's seat. seat. I, and this is on tape now, okay. I who had responsibility <laughs> to close the loader's hatch, which came in, and, I'll, and I still have the loader's hatch right here, uh, to come in. I didn't shut it fast enough. Uh-oh. Well, You're fessing up. Yeah, and I said it's on tape, and I said, Listen good to this. Okay. It's been a running joke between us for years. <laughs> Who didn't? Uh, anyway, uh, he went over a little rise. We went over another rise. We were like this, and there was an NVA with an RPG right there. Team. Who? Wow. RPG yeah, team. Who oh. would have shot 
and got him right in the belly. Yeah. Because it was, I mean, it was just like that. Yeah. But just as they were shooting, we started coming down. So there ran the RPG, hit, skipped off the top of the turret, hit the loader hatch, which was still up in the air, and it all rained down on me. This, uh, which, he looked like a Martian. His comm helmet had shrapnel sticking out of it. P wow. Piece of the yeah. shrapnel sticking out. And of that's it. when the inside of the tank was just full of smoke, and I don't know if it was actually on fire or not, uh, but that's when uh, the TC said, they allow and it's, you know, yeah. the Who is the TC? Uh, Holston, Jim Holston. Jim Holston. James Holston. <coughs> Did he make it up? No. Oh, yeah. He made it oh, up. Oh, he made it, yes. But yeah, he's, he's not here. He's not he's here. Not here. Okay. And I, when, after he said bail out, uh, I was about halfway up the, the TC's seat and going to head out through the hatch, and nothing was happening. I mean, we, we weren't blowing up. Yeah, and then that's when I saw Hank laying down on the on the deck of the tank. Wow! And we had a lot of smoke Tell about in there. the fire extinguisher. It was the story is, and I don't remember who they're saying it's me. I don't remember who did it. But uh, a day or two before, we had a way of cooling beer whenever we got beer. Uh, put it in a 55 gallon drum of diesel fuel, have it below ground, and hit the diesel fuel with a fire extinguisher. And it made cold beer, and it was good. Well, apparently we had done it the day or two days before or something like that. Then we were out there when, uh, according to them, when I came to, I grabbed the fire extinguisher and was trying to put out a fire with an empty fire extinguisher because we had used it to cool beer the day before. I remember the story, but I don't remember me doing it. I thought it was one of you three. I. Uh, I don't remember. Yeah. There's so much that it, it, I don't yeah, there was so much that was going on at the time, and you can't remember yeah. everything. At now, that accurately. at that particular time, when Holson was yelling, "Everybody get the hell out because we're on fire!" That's what he, you know. And the reason for that is because we have Willie Peter rounds on right. the tank, and if one of those go off, you're yeah. you, you've been cooked. So I bail out of the driver's hatch, and by the way, I'm being cooked to death. From the from the heat from the uh, other tank, just yeah, right pour it into the driver's front. hatch, and so I get out. Holston's out. Holston's in front of me, and this is all the tank is. Everything's moving at the at all this time, and uh, I'm behind Holston. We have our 45s out, and uh, all of a sudden we start we get in green tracer rounds. We're seeing this coming at us, and Gook stop or Holston stops, and. Blows a gook out of the bushes and says, "Let's get back to the tank." It's whatever, and that's again. I jumped back in that tank, and it was like one of like a basketball, all all net. You know, I went right into that driver's hatch, and uh, then we were pretty soon we were out on the break, out on the tracer round with the whole Marine Corps out there, uh, and they had to keep moving because the gooks would artillery would come in, we'd have choppers coming in for medevacs, and they were nailing our areas, and we had to keep moving. I don't know further away or something. I can't remember yeah. off the up to the line and we would be up on the uh, tank bringing the body one of uh, uh, this particular incident I was up on the gunny's tank and we were taking uh, bodies off right. fallen heroes and I, I look at the uh, uh, gunny's cupola and there's a like a silver dent in the side of the cupola and I thought that was strange I was looking like a dent there and I looked down there's a dud RPG so, I, and I always felt that, I bet you that happened on the way out, mm -hmm. that we got nailed, and if that had hit him, I don't know what the hell yeah. we would have done. Wow. And We'd the, still be there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you picked up the infantry bodies and, and wounded on your way out as you were being dragged out of the No, the no, no, no. We did, when we, when we were being hooked up to the gunnage tank, we were at, where there's a couple guys that were, I think, killed when we hit that mine. Okay. And uh, we put them aboard. Okay. Now you get back to a fairly safe area in the trace, but you're still possibly taking artillery. Yeah. Did you three of you get medevac? I got medevac. Okay. I got medevac. Uh, yeah, all of us did, but all yeah. separately. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it wasn't on the same. Yeah, and I, but I yeah. went to Cameron Bay too. <coughs> and I went to Cameron Bay too. Yeah. We, all, no, we didn't yeah, even we see all, each other. We didn't down see there. each other. We didn't see no. Each other. No. 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 Now, did you get back together after 
I, well, I never you saw him. You went to Japan? That. Well, actually, I didn't. You went into, you were I an saw, office pog. I we, saw you down in Cameron Bay, or one of you. I, I was down in Cameron Bay. I don't remember. I don't remember. Anyway, I had a concussion at the time, and I don't remember what the deal was. I, I When they finally let me out of Cameron Bay, they said, okay, you're going back up to DMZ. So uh, I think it was Fubai went to, you know, on the way back from Cameron Bay back up to Kantian, went to Fubai, uh, it was overnight in Fubai, and I was supposed to go out on a patrol. Uh, and they stuck me as tank commander on this because I was the only tank commander uh, or tanker there. And uh, we went out in the afternoon on patrol and I'm sitting up in the TC's cupola and there's a couple of grunts walking around. A couple of them sitting on a tank and there's one bush in this field and this one grunt jumps off and lands on a bush. Well, that bush was booby trap. Wow. Uh, and I don't even know if I ever told you guys this. It, it wasn't bad, but the grenade or whatever went off, blew his legs off, and I'm calling in the medevac for him, and I'm going, Jesus Christ, it's hot. And I hear it like this, and it was all red. Well, I got hit with shrapnel in the neck, and it's like your head, you know, it yeah. bleeds profusely. Mm. Uh, but that's when I got my second wound. That's when I went to the hospital ship. And from the hospital ship, they said, okay, you had two hearts over 48 hours in the hospital for each. That's when I went to Iwakuni, Japan. Yeah. So that's how I got to Japan. There was a little yeah. detour in there. Now, have you ever looked at the command chronologies for that day and that event and, and seen how many uh, enemy KIAs there were? Or anything I, like that? I have a, uh, a uh, 1967 Marine Corps uh, history book of Vietnam uh, for the events that happened. And that particular Buffalo operation is in there. It's written up in there. Yeah, my understanding, I've heard different takes on this, but my understanding was that, that the overall operation as far as killed, the Marines killed, was about 159, something like that. And that particular day, or that morning when we were in there, there was uh, like 80 some Marines out of Bravo Company killed, but I've heard that it's higher than that. Yeah. It was higher. I've read an article where it says 118. That that particular day. That day. Yeah. Just that day that, for Operation that day, Buffalo. That operation. That day. Not, that not total in country. Just that one. Yeah. 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 Uh, the operation lasted for like three or four days. Right. And uh, overall, they took a lot more. So, did you all go back to a unit in Vietnam after that, or did you come home? I, when I left Cameron Bay, they sent me up to uh, uh, Bravo First Platoon. Okay. That was under at the rock pile, and payable, to do convoys on mm -hmm. its way to Quezon. I was going to say Quezon uh, probably runs to Quezon. Yeah. Yeah. And then you ended up. I thought you ended up back in Fubai. Well, it was after that. that you got wounded again? Fu no. I would, yeah. Contien was my second wound. That's what I thought. But okay. didn't they didn't they round you up and send you down? But that was after I was out. That's after, after I was after in after first platoon pile. for a couple of oh, months. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's right, yeah. Yeah, I know for me, I went back to Bravo Company to second platoon. And uh, I always thought it was interesting when I was medevaced down to, uh, out of this operation, they were kept moving us down the line from uh, uh, Kantian, of course, to Dong Ha and then to Phu Bai. And uh, then I think it might have been from there down to Cameron Bay. And uh, they had a, what is it, a C-120 or C-123? C-130. C-130. Yeah. 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 yeah, and they had us in there like uh, like like a Navy ships, like we you yeah. sleep. Oh, stacked? Yeah, yeah. stacked. It was, it was just four or at, five at, high. And, wow. they, and it was full. Just, yeah. And, and they flew that plane just perfect. You couldn't feel anything. You, you could hardly feel it take off. You could hardly feel it land. It was done so well. And the reason I'm telling you this story is because when I came back, I flew up back up on the same type of plane, except they just had you, they Strapped plowed you in there. And I remember being at Cameron Bay and seeing these uh, two American nurses, round eyes, mm -hmm. which, geez, you know, I haven't seen anything like that for a long time, in skirts, yeah. yeah. And when I came aboard that plane, I looked up towards the cockpit and these two gals were in there with the pilots, and you could tell with the legs, you know, they were, you, know you could look in there and see. And after a while, we got up in the air, 
And boy, a lot of shit started going on with the way that plane was being <laughs> flown. And you just know they were letting those girls fly the plane. You just know it. And so, you know, one of the, I, I remember one of the things they asked me at Cameron Bay about going back to my unit, I was complaining about uh, dizziness, mm -hmm. I had a concussion and stuff. And, and uh, I said, when I stand up, I says, I'm real lightheaded, I'm dizzy. And he said, how are you when you're sitting down? I said, I'm all right when I'm sitting down. You're a driver, right? And yeah, I said, well, you'll be okay. <laughs> they sent me back at that particular time. So. Well, they, the, the medics had a way of doing that. We're not, uh, what do you call it, triage, uh, out of being wounded. I had, you know, the, no, no wounds here. The helmet was peppered, but no here. But a couple here, a couple here, down in the leg. And when they were looking at me, deciding, you know, where you're going to go, the one in here still had the shrapnel. You could see it. It was it went in and came out. Yeah. And uh, I said, hey, what about this one? And they picked it out with, uh, with tweezers. And I'm, I'm seeing these two holes there. And I said, well, what about that? Well, the guy just pulls the scissors out, sticks it in one hole, pulls it out the other, goes, snapped it, put a band aid on it. He said, you'll be fine. <laughs> so it's the same thing, you know, yeah. well, you're the driver. Yeah. Yeah. You'll be sitting, you'll be fine. Well, like, you go back to, like, when I first got there, I had a toothache. And, I held 55 and they sent me in and I had a hitchhike uh, and I was just in country for a couple of days at that time but I had a terrible toothache and I went to see some corpsman somewhere yeah they sent me in a chair and gave me a shot and pulled the tooth out said they'll fix it when you get back. <laughs> well guys I want to thank you very much this is a fascinating story and, mm -hmm. and we've got it captured and we've got the information to contact you if we need any more okay. details but um, this is great these, these are the types of things that we want to capture uh, as we said during the early days of the reunion, you know, we're all not going to be here forever. So if we can capture this stuff now and get a chronicle for kids and grandkids to take a look at, that's what we're trying to do. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Much. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Do you know you talked for 45 minutes?